So the first Python tutor link will take you to this visualization. It shows you these two assignment statements. The first one is x is 36 raised to the power 36. As you can imagine, that's a very large uh, value. And then we have this simple assignment statement, y is equal to x. When Python Tutor is ready to execute, this red arrow will indicate the statement that is about to execute. So we haven't yet done x is equal to 36 to the power 36. We're about to do that. And when we click on this next, that first statement will execute and the red arrow jumps to line 2. On the right hand side, it shows you this x labeling this very large integer object. It's so large that it's not even visible entirely on this screen. That is 36 to the power 36. The green arrow now shows you the statement that just executed and now we're ready to do the second statement. So when I click on next, observe what happens in this region where we visualize. I click on next and doesn't it look like we created a second box and copied the data from the previous box down to the second box? This is the default Python tutor visualization and it is misleading. It can make you think that x is like this box and when I do y is equal to x, I'm really copying all this information over here. But that's not what is happening. So let me show you how we can modify the default Python tutor visualization. I will click on edit this code and here is the code. If I like, I can modify the code, but for now I will focus on these options below. One of these options is set to the default value inline primitives don't nest objects, which is a little hard to understand. I will change this to render all objects on the heap, which is useful for Python and for Java. We are doing Python, so we will click on this. Now when we click on visualize execution, the same piece of code will be executed. But this time observe what happens when I click on next. I get this variable x labeling this integer object that was created. This is 36 to the power 36. So I can actually move my mouse over here and you will see that this arrow highlights in red so it's easy to see which variable is referring to this object. So x is labeling or is assigned to this object. Now when I do the assignment statement y is equal to x, when I click on next, observe what happens. I get two variables attached to the same object. I don't copy this object. I don't have two copies of this giant number in my memory. I have only a single integer object and I have two variables that are both attached to that object. So this is the correct way of visualizing this piece of code. As you can see, with so many arrows, this kind of visualization might get cluttered after a while. And this is why the default Python tutor visualization shows it without these arrows. But as a beginner, I would like you to use the non-default visualization so that it is very clear which variables are labeling which objects. Now let's take a look at this simple piece of code. Our friend is staring at this and, say, and says that this Python code swaps the values of x and y. It seems natural, doesn't it? x is y, y is x, that seems to swap those two. But let's actually visualize this code on Python Tutor. The code that I will show you will make use of comments, which is a useful way for a programmer to indicate what the code is doing in natural language. And we will see that this particular code does not swap the value of the two variables. We will see a correct way to swap the value of two variables, both with what is called a temporary variable and then without a temporary variable.